Hey guys, so in this video we're going to look at describing a scatter plot. We've already had a look at drawing scatter plots and uh, x and y variables, but we want to now work on describing the relationships we're observing. So if we remember, when we're drawing a scatter plot, we have our vertical axis, which we always call our y axis, and we've got our horizontal axis, which we always call our x axis. So when we're describing these scatter plots, there's three main techniques which we use to describe the plot. So the first one, the first feature which we have, is what we call the strength. So I'll number these plots 1 and say plot 2. So when we're looking at strength, we're basically looking at how tightly packed the data is around a trend. So a helpful way to do that is to basically draw lines either side of this data plot, scatter plot, and if the lines are really close together, then you can say the relationship's quite strong. Whereas if we look at number two, if we were to draw these exact same lines down the sides of the plot, we'd say that the lines are really far apart. So when the lines are close together, like this, we'd say that the relationship is strong. So for our first plot, number one over here, we'd say that there is a strong relationship. But for number two, if you look at it, we can see these lines are really widely spaced. So we can say that the strength of the relationship we'd say this is what is called a weak relationship. So yes, you can have medium relationships and they're basically going to be a judgment call, but if the lines are sort of moderately spaced apart, then it will be a moderate relationship. The next uh, descriptive item we look at or feature is called the direction. So the direction basically indicates which way the relationship goes. So for our first scatter plot, we can see that if we follow these lines here, which we've drawn, these guidelines, it points upwards. So it points up up here somewhere. And if we look at this second data plot, if we draw the same arrow based on these points, we can see that the relationship comes down here, sort of, and it points downwards. So we've got one pointing up and one pointing down. So for direction, we'd say that when the relationship is pointing up, this relationship has what's called a positive gradient, and it's pointing upwards. So we'd say that we have a positive relationship. And this exists because if we have a one unit change in x, so if we go across in x, then there's going to be a positive change in y. So if we go across x by one, y will go up by one. If we go across by another one unit, y will go up by another one unit. So we get this positive relationship emerging. Whereas we look at our second plot, and we go to describe our direction, we can see that if we have this downward sloping, it's the opposite. So we've got what's called a negative relationship. And this exists because if we have a one unit change in x, so x goes up by say one, then we'd expect that we'd move across, so x would go up by one, we'd go from being here to being somewhere down here, so we'd have a downward change in y, so y would decrease by 1. And then if we move up again by another 1 unit, we'd expect maybe y to decrease by another unit. So as x increases, y decreases, so we get this negative relationship. And that's what's called direction, describing the direction. The last sort of feature which we use to describe is form. So we have two types of form, and I'll write these over here. So we've got linear, which means it's a straight line. 
and then we have nonlinear, which is basically just not a straight line. So if we look at both of these plots, we've already drawn these guidelines here. And for the first one, we could pretty comfortably look at it and say that it's going to be a straight line relationship because it really looks like a straight line relationship. And it goes kind of up. So it goes up this way in a straight line. So it, the form for the first one is definitely going to be linear. So we'll say the first one is linear and not nonlinear. And then we want to describe the form for our second scatter plot. So you want to describe the form again. So the form for this second relationship is most likely going to be, well, we could draw a line down here, and all the data looks pretty much like it would follow along this line, even though it is fairly weakly following it. So we'd say the form, again, is going to be linear. So we'd say that both of the relationships are linear. So an example of maybe a nonlinear relationship, I'll, I'll do it up here. So a nonlinear relationship, let me just erase all of this, would look something a little bit like this. We might see some values up here, but it might come down and then have a bend here, so it might bend, and then it might start to go back up. So what we can see is that the relationship would form sort of a smile, so it would come down like that, and our curve would sit in there. So we'd have this nonlinear relationship. So this here is an example of a nonlinear. But our original curves were described a strong relationship, positive relationship linear for number one, and a weak, negative, linear relationship for number two. So that's how we describe scatter plots, and there'll be some examples go up. Uh, have a go at them. Thanks for that, guys. I hope to see you for the next video.